One of the most important things you can learn in Fusion is constraints. The reason? Because your design will fall apart without it. Your sketches are a mess, things move when they shouldn't, and you'll spend time troubleshooting. I'm going to teach you how to use constraints and some bonuses and pro tips on how to use them better. Imagine you're making a plate with a few holes in it and you want it to stay square and you want to be able to make design changes and the holes stay where they're supposed to. But when I make changes to this plate, you can see like it doesn't even stay in a square fashion. If I make a big change up here, look what happens, right? This is what happens without constraints. So a huge tip for everyone out there today, should you use dimensions first or should you use constraints? And I like to tell people the describe it method where if I was sketching something, I would sketch it out. I would add everything in that I'm thinking about, but also I would come in and how would I describe it to fusion? How I describe it to someone, right? So in this case, you say I'm making a plate with four holes. I say, great. Is it a rectangle or square? And you say, well, it's square, meaning all the sides are going to be equal. Great. And what about the holes? Are they the same? Yep, they are the same. So, okay, I'm going to select all four and make them equal. Great. How do they line up? Well, they line up evenly from corner to corner. They should be aligned on, you know, like a diagonal axis. Great. And is there a hole in the middle? Sure. And then I want to round the edges with tangency to where the arcs aren't crazy. All of that can be done basically with constraints. We've made these equal. We've made all the holes equal. And now just with a few dimensions, we're going to have this thing fully defined. This is 120 and this is 20 and that updates it. The only thing we're really missing is the placement or this distance that these sit from corner to corner. And I haven't added that constraint yet to tell the holes where they sit in relationship to each other. So I could set that this hole lines up with this one vertically and this one line up vertically. These two line up vertically. Great. I'm done. And there's a lot of intelligence in this design just by using those constraints. So let's work through the different constraints. The big thing is you need to be editing a sketch and then you'll find your constraints up here on the toolbar. You can expand and see all of them. Your toolbar might have a little more room on it than mine. I have mine turned up pretty high just to make it easy to see in the tutorial. What do you do when a line isn't quite vertical, but it should be? It'll move around, it'll drag, you want it to be vertical. Simply click on it and choose this horizontal vertical. It will snap to what's closest. So in this case, it's close to a vertical, it'll snap that in. Same here, this will snap it to horizontal. What's great about this is it locks it into that design and keeps that horizontal or vertical as needed. A thing to also note is that points can be horizontal and vertical like I was just showing. This point can line up with that point vertically or horizontally. In this case, it snaps to the horizontal. One tip when you're sketching, there's the ability to auto constrain. When you notice that I get close to vertical, this blue icon for vertical pops up on the sketch right in the middle. That's telling me it's auto constraining to vertical. So it saves me a little bit of time. I click and then I come over. It's adding a blue perpendicular. There's going to be a, a 90 degree angle between these that's locked in. Same thing here. If I get it close, you can see that blue perpendicular. That's auto constraints. It's adding these auto perpendiculars and an auto vertical in this case. Coincident, you're going to use this one a lot in Fusion. So this one, it has to do with connecting points usually. And so if I were to click a line and I miss, right, I'm not quite connected. I want to make this point and this point touch. I select both with command or control, hit coincident, it locks them together. And so it won't go anywhere from now on. This is important when it comes to placing circles. If I want this circle in space, but now I want it connected to the origin, simply drag, it'll usually snap it into place and add the coincident, or I can select both and make them coincident. It locks it right onto the origin. Next is tangency, especially prevalent when you've got a need to have a nice smooth transition. When you do fillets in a corner, it's going to have auto tangency. So when I'm doing this arc between these two points, you can see that it could be way out in space. It could come in, come out, however I want to place this. But if I want a nice smooth transition, 
that's where I would want to add some tangency. So I would set from this line into this arc, make them tangent. And so it adjusts the arc so that it can solve into that nice curvature from the line. What do you do when you need to have sides stay the same length? In this example, we want it to be a square. I simply choose them and make them equal. And now these are all going to stay the same. And you only need one dimension to drive all of these sides. If you do add an extra dimension, it's going to be driven, just meaning it's a reference dimension or it's more of a measurement. It's not editable. So you can see I've got these three extras that tell me how long it is, but really this is the master. This is the one that drives all of it. And so they all update when I change it. When sketching lines, sometimes you're going to want things to be parallel. You want them to be perpendicular. So let's look at both. So in this case, I want this to be a nice 90 degree angle. I could go in and put a smart dimension to make it 90, or I can add a constraint between these two lines and choose this T looking shape and make it perpendicular. Now, what if I wanted a line that came ran at exactly the same angle as that one? Well, I'll choose not equal, looks similar, go to parallel and choose the two lines. And now they're going to run at the same angle in space. I want to run a line from the middle of this to the middle of this. How do I do it? When you're sketching lines, this little triangle will pop up when you get to the midpoint. So if I just hover, I'll find the midpoint there, hover over here till the little triangle wakes up. Great. Or I could, if I had this line off in space, what if I wanted to connect this point to the middle of this line? Simply select the line. You don't have to find it. You don't have to find the midpoint. Go hit the triangle. It'll go to that midpoint from that other point and connect the two. Now, if you had a circle at the origin and then you had an arc and you want them to have the same center point and behave the same way. So in this case, I've got a pretty different radius and a different center point. But if I select this arc and this arc and I choose concentric, this will allow me to have the same center point. So they're going to behave very similarly now because they have the same center point. And I can even now set the radius for both. And they can be different because they're still concentric, even though they are different sizes. Okay, you're sketching off in space and you want to have a line line up with another line. So I have this line and I have this line. If you'd like them to line up, imagine that lines are infinite or a vector if you're familiar with that. And so what we want to do is choose both and set that they run in the same line or they share the same line and that's collinear. And so that will line them up. That doesn't mean they have to touch. It just means they line up. Same goes for like an edge. So in this case, if I choose this edge, choose our line, and now choose collinear, it's going to line it up with that edge. Now, one thing is, why did that line move? This one, why did this one move? Why didn't the edge move? Why didn't the block move, right? So in Fusion, it usually tries to go with whatever has more definition. So this block has already been extruded. It knows where it sits in space. The line can move anywhere. It's going to move the line. Anything that's less defined will try to follow the other. Okay, let's talk about symmetry. The way symmetry works is you just need a center line or a construction line, and then you need your objects. They could be lines. It could be circles. So I'll choose these two circles. What I'm going to do is choose the two circles first. It does matter on the order. I'll choose the circle and the line and then choose symmetry and it'll make these symmetric and it does continue to solve and work with these two. It does continue to solve that symmetry and keep that constraint. Now, an important thing about constraints is what's available. So if I have two lines and I select these two lines, notice how my menu doesn't have everything. It does have vertical. It does have equal, parallel, perpendicular. It does not have tangency between two lines because I need an arc. It doesn't have coincidence because I have two lines selected. If I have two points selected, again, it's going to matter what you select. I could make them horizontal. I could make them touch. I could make them possibly symmetric. But 
it's only going to show you what's possible in your menu, what, depending on what you select. So if I have two circles and I select the two arcs, I expect tangency equal. You could fix them. And that brings up fix. Fix is kind of your quick and dirty. Definitely not a best practice to use. I use it temporarily when I need to lock the sketch down and then I come back and I get rid of it and I use all the proper constraints to get my sketch finished. Okay, our bonus for today, I really want to create a rectangular slot on this, but I need it centered. And this is a beginner skill that I've seen countless users in Fusion struggle with in all the courses that I've taught. This is a big one. You want to know how to do it, be comfortable with it, but it can be kind of tricky. So I want to show you a bunch of ways to do it. All right, let's talk about all the interesting ways we could do this. One, one of my favorites that's kind of interesting is simply sketch from your midpoint to the midpoint that you need, to the one you want, and then click that line and make it vertical. So, okay, this made them line up, that's great. Next, how else could we have done this? Well, you can do a construction line. I love to draw construction lines. Construction line on the plate, and now if this thing had its own construction line in the middle to middle, this is probably one of my faves, I'll make that construction, make sure that this lines up with the midpoint. Okay, so this is running down the middle. I'll select both lines and I'll say that they are collinear or line up. That's a good one. Probably seeing this from a few minutes ago. What about symmetry? So select the two outer arcs and this construction line. Come up and choose symmetry. It will put these about that construction line. So do the two outer objects first and then the construction line last and then you've got symmetry. How about one more? One I like that's kind of an interesting one is if you look for your point in sketch and you add a point to the midpoint and just simply connect it to that line, boom, that's centered. That's another one. So lots of cool ways you can use constraints. This is a fun practice. Try this out. Try to center some objects, see where you get stuck, open up some of your old sketches and figure out what needs constraints. My final tip for you today, when you have a sketch and you've gone to the trouble of adding all of these dimensions and even your constraints, I set this one to horizontal. This is looking really good. I feel like it should be done. I don't know what's missing. Anything blue, see what moves. That will start to tell you what's missing. So in this case, I'll simply click the top to bottom i'll add that dimension drag it again drag over here okay so this distance or the distance from to the point from the small edge however you want to define it those critical dimensions do that what's missing here so it looks like the angle can be adjusted or this length of this line Okay, so as i wrap up here you can see that we're almost there anything that's blue that moves means it still needs a dimension or a constraint, and you can come in and use the auto constraint. So this will automatically wrap it up for you. I would just encourage you to put on the important dimensions and constraints that you want before running it. And this is a paid tool, right? So you need to have the paid version of Fusion to use this. Hey, so this is a really important one. Take some time to practice your constraints today. Hope this helps. We're making our way through all the important features in Fusion. I'll see you guys tomorrow.